In a conversation this week, I was asked, Pastor Brian, why do you like the Puritans? And in my sort of terrible, small talky, bumbling way, I said something stupid like, I like the Puritans because I like them and you should like them, which isn't really a very helpful answer. So I'd like to take another stab at that because it is a good question. Why do I like the Puritans? Why do I think you should like the Puritans? To get at this, let's see if we can understand who the Puritans were. And I'm certainly not going to give an exhaustive answer and I don't have all the dates and all the exact names right. But in general, the Puritans were a group of men and women who loved the Lord and we're just meditating deeply on his word, digging into his word, coming out of the Reformation, you know, early 15, mid 1500s, and, and they wanted to see the Reformation continue. They wanted to see a purification of the church and of the, the heart and of the individual even. So we have this group of people in a very difficult time in the history of England. This is when... Um, the church was cutting ties with the Pope. Uh, Henry wanted to divorce his wife and declared himself the Pope. Things were crazy, and so now he's the head of the church, and is the church Catholic? Well, for him, yes, but it just didn't have a Pope, and he was going to fill that role. And, and then later we saw, you know, the Protestant stuff was just sort of moving around and churning things up, and so you had England being Catholic and Protestant. I mean, this is the time of Bloody Mary and, and Lady Jane Grey, and they're killing people. This is when the, when the King James Bible came about, now we have the Bible in the English, and we had William Tyndale's work, and how was that going to work? And, 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 and in that time period, a group of men and women loving God, wanting to glorify Him with their lives and everything that they did, really were pressing in to God. The challenge was this also brought about a lot of persecution for them, and so uh, a group of them got on the Mayflower and came over to the New World, you know, to to have freedom from that persecution. We know them as the pilgrims. We'll talk about them in a moment. Uh, others had to leave their pulpits and, and do open air preaching in the countryside. And, and we have people like John Bunyan who were imprisoned for years where great, great and amazing writing came about. These Puritans would meditate on one or two verses and they'd write entire books about just the, the deep reflection of what was there. And they were just moved to know God. They delighted in Him. They savored Him. They loved Him. Now, we don't have a clear end, but we see that Puritans ended up you know, in the, the New England area. And from them, we got people like Jonathan Edwards, and some say he might be one of the last Puritans. We saw a group of folks work in sort of the, the Westminster Confession and, and uh, some of that work. Now, the Puritans were kind of cross different denominational ideas. I mean, they had, we had Presbyterian Puritans, we had Baptist Puritans. Puritans are all Reformed. They all have a very high view of God, want to glorify Him. But, but this was a wide-ranging thing. So, so they're working in different ways. We saw uh, the Dutch Reform group, and we saw some continuations of things in other parts of the world. A lot of cool stuff. Why I really enjoy reading these Puritans is because the people that I first started reading and the preachers that I even listen to today kind of grew up on them, and, and they're... Their doctrine came from these rich writings and these rich sermons. Alistair Begg listens to the Puritans. Uh, John Piper loves and cherishes the Puritans, especially Jonathan Edwards. Uh, and when you go back at, and you hear kind of who some of those guys were listening to, Martin Lloyd-Jones was a, a, some even say he might have been one of the last Puritans, passionate about the Puritans. He was even involved in starting uh, the Banner of Truth publishing company that makes all these Puritan paperback books, which I love. This is the only actual paperback one I own. I have them all on Kindle, you know, or I have some of them on Kindle, uh, and you just got to read them now. It's not as good, but a lot of them are free or very cheap. I love the Puritan paperbacks. I just, my budget doesn't seem to allow for me to have the volumes. I think if you have like $400, you could have all of them. But in any case, um, Banner of Truth puts that out, and it's just rich, rich, rich stuff. And so, you know, if, if Spurgeon learned from the Puritans, and, and I'm reading Spurgeon, I need to go to who he's reading. And then who did the Puritans read? Well, they read the Bible, and they consulted one another as they're deeply reflecting on these things. These, these Puritans, over the span of 200 years, or depending on how far you go, 300 years, really digging deep into God just is really moving to me. You know, I read these kind of books. I love the, the Valley of Vision. I love the prayers that are written in here, and they're just, they're powerful, and they're moving. And these are people who love God, and and cherish God, and I want to. I want to see God in that way, and I want to. I want to hear from the Lord the way they did. I want to meditate on Him the way they did. Well, how am I going to learn that? 
Now, where, where am I going to go? Well, I can go to some of these pastors who are passionate about, about these deep thinkers, or then I can just go straight to the deep thinkers themselves. And so why do I like these, these Puritans? Well, because of the remarkable faith they had. You know, Lady Jane Grey, young woman, learned, pressing in with everything she had to learn. And then, you know, was the queen for just a few days after the Bloody Mary, st- I mean, Bloody Mary overthrew her, but just this whole thing and gave up her life faithfully. Um, amazing woman of God. All these men who are deeply thinking and writing on the word. And, and it just moves me to want to be closer to Jesus. You know, if, if I want to be a pastor who helps others be closer to Jesus, I too need to be close to Jesus and I need to look for men and women who draw me closer to Jesus. And for me, that's the Puritans. So why do I like the Puritans? Why do I love the Puritans? Because they love Jesus. And when I look to them, I go, wow, I want to love Jesus like they love Jesus. They're glorifying God immensely.